Hello and welcome again to my channel. Today we're going to go over classification of images with neural networks. The tools for this tutorial are going to be Python, TensorFlow, and Google Collab. And if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start. So to start, if you watch my last tutorial, the problem that we went over, it was a regression problem. In regression problems, the input of the neural network and the output, it's only one number. For instance, in my last tutorial, we passed in a Celsius degree number and we received a Fahrenheit number. Maybe another example, so you can wrap your head around this concept, is if we try to figure out the value of a house, we need to take in consideration many variables, like the number of rooms, how many bathrooms, the square perimeters, and finally, the price or input is only going to be one number. Today's problem is a classification problem. We're going to have a data set of images of different types of clothes and the output of the neural network has to tell us to which label or which category the image belongs to. For instance, if we have 10 labels or 10 categories, our neural network is going to have 10 neuron outputs. The images that we're going to use are going to be 20 pixels by 20 pixels which means we're going to have 28 times 28, which is 784 pixels, which that's going to be the number of neurons that we're going to have as input. And so now we know that we're going to have a neural network that's going to have 784 neurons as input, and we're going to have 10 neurons as output for the labels. As usual, we're going to work in Google Collab, and to start, we first need to bring in our imports. So let's import TensorFlow and TensorFlow dataset. That's going to allow us to import the NIST library for the closed datasets really easy. So I'm just going to bring them right here, and then I'm going to click Execute to make sure everything's working. All right, so next step is that we need to load our dataset. So let's use tfds.load or the load method from TensorFlow datasets. And then we're going to grab our data and our metadata. Just make sure you have these uh, two params as supervised true and with info true because it's essential for us that we grab the metadata for all the pictures in the data set. And just to let you know, you can find the NIST data set in Kaggle. It's this one right here. You can see the 28 by 28 pictures of all the different type of clothes that we're going to work on. Or you can also find it in the TensorFlow website right here. Okay, so now let's download the data set. And it's going to take a little while because it's a big data set, but yeah, just wait for it. Okay, so now that the download is ready, we can test by just printing the metadata. So let's see what happens here. And we can see a lot of information right here, such as right here that you can see that we have 60,000 images for training and the 10,000 images that we're going to use for testing. Okay, so now let's split our data. We're going to use two different variables to split our data between training and testing. Okay, so now execute. Something else that we can do that's pretty useful, we can see the labels from all the different images that we're going to use. So let's do that right now. So now let's print the labels. And here you can see that we have all type of clothes, so like t-shirts, trousers, pullovers, dress, coats, and such. So let's continue. Usually when we train a neural network, we normally want to normalize the data. In other words, you have to make the images be between 1 to 0. That really helps a lot to accelerate training and improve results. Normally, you will receive the values from 0 to 225 since those are the values from the pixels. So now let's create a function that's going to take care of this for us. And you should always take this step in consideration when you're working with images. Now we need to pass in our two data sets to this normalized function. Finally, we're going to add our data sets to the cache. So essentially, we're going to load our data sets from the memory instead of from disk. And this is going to make our training way faster. Okay, so now I just want to make sure that the data set and everything is working. So I want to see one of the images. So first, we're going to loop in the data set. So now I'm going to resize the image using NumPy and the reshape method. Let's import matplotlib. And now let's draw the image in screen. So let me execute. And boom, this is the first image in our data set. And we can really print all type of images right here. And we can also see the labels that are linked to the images. All right, so now let's print everything. All right, so yeah, this is how you see your images and your labels. So now we're going to create the model. So we're going to use the Keras API. And we're going to use a sequential model that's going to have the layers stack one after the other. OK, so the first layer of the model is going to be our input layer. Here we're going to pass our images, which are going to be 28 by 28 pixels. And we're going to use only one channel, which means black and white. And we're going to use the flatten function right here, which is going to do what it sounds like. It's going to flatten the two dimension images into one dimension. OK, so now let's specify our hidden layers. And we're going to have two. So this is going to be the first one we're gonna have 50 neurons and we're gonna use the activation function relu and it's going to be the same for the second layer so now let's specify the output layer and as you already know we're gonna have 10 outputs since that's the number of the labels that we have and then we're gonna use the softmax function as our activation function and this is the function that we usually use when we are working with classification problems 
Okay, so the next step is going to be to compile the model. We're going to use the optimizer Adam. This is going to be our loss function, and this is the typical function that we use in classification problems. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So let's compile the model. Okay, so since we have 7,000 examples of data, we're not going to just send everything to the model. That would take forever. So we have to do it in an optimized way. So what we essentially going to do is we're going to create batches of data that we're going to use to train our model. Okay, so first let's define the variable batch that's going to be equal to 32. Okay, so now we're going to adjust some of the properties of the training data and the testing data. Since we're going to do many loops when the model is training, we want the model to do this in a random way. For this reason, we're going to use two functions, repeat and shuffle from Python. And with these functions, we're going to accomplish this behavior. So let's put it right here. So we're going to have our training data. We're going to repeat and then shuffle everything. To the shuffle method, you have to pass in how many data examples you have. So we have five, we pass in five. We're going to define two variables that are going to contain the number of examples for the testing data set and the training data set. So let's do it above right here. So if we go right here and then we print everything, you're going to see that we are going to get the 60,000 and then 10,000 for, you know, for everything. So let me show you this. And then you're going to see the 60,000 and then the 10,000 data sets. Okay, so finally, let's grab this variable right here and the training data numbers and then pass it to the shuffle function. Finally, let me define the batch function. Here, we're going to define the number of batches that we're going to train per cycle. We have to grab this number right here, the batch variable, and pass it right here. And for the testing data, we don't really have to do this repeat and shuffle. We only have to pass in the batch method right here and pass in the variable. And after all these steps, we're finally ready to train the model. All right, so let's start with the variable right here. So we're gonna have our results right here. Then we have to call in our model feed method, which is the method that we use to train the models. So the first thing that you have to pass in is the training data. So passing the training data set. Next one, you have to pass in the epochs, which is the number of cycles that your model is going to have. So let's pass in five. And finally, you also have to pass in the steps per epoch. And this is used for telling the model how many batches are we gonna use per epoch. All right, so let's execute everything. And the model is training right now. And you're gonna see that's taking some time since we're working with a big data set. And as you see that with training, ideally you want to see that the accuracy of the model improves in each epoch. So you see we have a 0 0.81, 0 0.86, 0 0.87, 87. And yeah, you ideally you want to have these numbers above 90%, but yeah, that's pretty much the essence to it. All right, so after the model is trained, we want to see the result of the loss function in a graph. So let me just put this right here. And then we're going to see the results. So these are the results of the training. And you can see how the model improved over each ebook. So now we are ready to test this model. Okay, so now I'm going to create a function where we pass in an index. And that index is just going to be the number of predictions that we want the model to make. So let's import matplotlib. Let's specify the index. Okay, so now let's loop through the testing data set and then pass in the index. Next, grab the first image and then shape it to 2828. Okay, so now we need to plot the image and then show it in the console. All right, so after this, we're ready to pass in the image to our prediction model. So let me put this right here. And we're just going to predict the image and then we have to transform it again to 2828. Okay, so now we need to predict the label for the input based on the output of the machine learning prediction. Okay, so now just grab the class names from the metadata. All right, so and finally, we're going to print the results in the consoles. Okay, so now let me execute the prediction in the console. And we have a code right here and the predicted class is a code. So the model seems to be working nice. So now let's uh, send in more images. So we, so this time I'm going to send 10 images. So we're going to see the prediction for 10 images. And we have, okay, it's still loading. Okay, so we have a code and it says it's a code. Okay, so we have code code. Perfect. This is ankle boot and it says that it's an ankle boot. The prediction is right. This is a code. Uh, code t-shirt top mm, we have a t-shirt top i have no idea look at this image i have no idea if this is a pullover or not but according to the neural network is a pullover this is a sneaker we have trousers okay so this is a mistake right here for me this is a t-shirt the model says it's a bag let's uh let me grab more images i'm going to try to grab at least uh 50. But I think for the predictions, at least 90% is going to be correct. And then you're going to have a 10% of margin of error. So you have to play around with these numbers. So let's keep checking this. This is a sandal. We have ankle boots. Uh, this is a back. This looks like a back. Backs, backs. Okay, so yeah, guys, so this was pretty much the tutorial. As always, I'm going to put my code in GitHub. If you like the tutorial, help me with the like and subscribe. That really helps. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.